Hi, I am Björn. I'm going to show you how to check if your battery or energy harvester that you're considering for your LoRaWAN application is the right one for you. To uh, test batteries as energy source for a generic node sensor edition that I use. Uh, I have profiled uh, batteries with uh, Otte battery toolbox and the batteries I have used uh, they are for example different uh, alkaline AA, AAA batteries. Uh, I have also discharged uh, some uh, coin cell batteries of different manufacturers and also the LM17500 and also a very popular battery the CR2 here from GP so as you can see uh, I have not used the uh, used normal battery connectors uh, to contact these to my Otto Arc when I discharge them I have a spot welded as you can see let's see if I can get it in focus I have spot welded so that means that I have uh, welded a metal strip onto the battery terminal to get uh, the best uh, connection to avoid uh, connection uh, resistance from the battery holder. And then I have a, a, ba a banana connector here to easily connect to my Otti Arc. And since this is uh, lithium batteries, of course I need to be very careful when I do stuff like this, like weld on the battery uh, connector. Uh, to be really safe, I have uh, this uh, fire extinguisher that I have received from uh, GPBM Nordic. Thank you very much for this. I didn't need to use it. That's good. Well, it of course depends on uh, your expected battery lifetime, but also things like uh, the environment that your device will be in in cold climate, warm climate and so on. It also uh, depends on uh, what application you are, how high discharge you have with your uh, device, if it is long sleep times etc. Of course you're also limited in size and in cost. So there is no uh, golden battery for all applications to pick. I have picked this CR2 from GP. So uh, I have here the power uh, measurement, the current measurement for this generic node. I have done the measurement both in spreading factor 9 and in spreading factor 12. So we could see differences in the power consumption. To calculate the battery lifetime I will use the Otti battery life estimator and here we need to start with the battery capacity. So if I look in the data sheet for the GP battery, the CR2, it states 800 milliamp hours at 10 milliamp down to 1.8 volt. So our use case is a little bit different. This has a higher average current consumption than uh, what we have with our generic node. But also, in our use case, we have higher peaks, as we see. In the data sheet, it stated 800 milliamp hours. When I discharged the batteries, uh, as have been shown previously, then I got 804 milliamp hours. So very close to the data sheet stated 800. So let's then enter the, our 804 milliamp hours into the capacity and then we need to measure let's start with uh, spread factor 12 and use this as uh, our use case so then i will mark my active period here get that from the selection here and then i would need to have the sleep 
current. So I just grab one selection here. Uh, I would like to have one measurement every fifth minute and that would mean 300, and 300 seconds. And of course 300 seconds if that is the cycle time then uh, I need to reduce with the active time so it's somewhere like 293. This CR2 battery it's a lithium manganese type of battery it has a typical self discharge of 1% per year. Look in the data sheet or talk to the battery manufacturer to know more about the self discharge. So let's do the calculation. So in this use case I have here my battery would last for 7.7 .7 months. So in spread and factor 9 I would instead of 7.7 .7 months get 3.4 years. If you are considering a solar panel as an energy source for your LoRaWAN device, you will have a great deal of options when it comes to material and sizes. So your choice will depend on where your device will be located and its use case. There are two things to consider when picking the right solar energy harvester. One, check the highest voltage that the solar panel can generate. This is the open circuit voltage. If your energy storage is full, this voltage might be high and then it might damage your device. Two, uh, pro profile the IV curve of your solar panel. So uh, you want to find the maximum power to be able to see if the energy provided will be enough for your duty cycle. So let's see how this might look like. Uh, I have selected uh, a solar panel, the COM16356 that you can buy from SparkFun. Here you can see the IV curve. It is a graph that shows the solar panel voltage when it is loaded with a discharge current. The power curve shows how much power the panel generates. This to find maximum power. Without going into too much details, we want to find out for what cycle time that the system is self-powered meaning the solar panel matches device in energy. We are assuming here that sleep mode consumption is much lower than the active one, but that is up to you and depending on the accuracy you want. For the two environments and two spreading factors, these are the duty cycle that this solar panel can power. The most often that generic node in this case can send is 24 0.2 seconds for spread in factor 9 and in the lab condition. The power the solar panel generates is actually higher in this case in the lab condition and that is due to that it is closer to the fluorescent light in the ceiling and the window use case was actually not that much sun. As a proof of concept for using generic node sensor addition with an energy harvesting, I have selected this solar harvesting circuit from Jasper Sikkim that you can buy at Tindy. So this is a, this is a device that will work in my solar panel in maximum peak power tracking. So that means that I will get as much energy as possible from my solar panel and it will store the energy into a lithium capacitor. In this case the lithium capacitor is a 30 farad capacitor and it is enough for this use case. So you can see my setup here when I am going to do this proof of concept. So I'm using my Otto Arc here to measure uh, voltages and to see that everything works as it should. So I have the sonar panel and here together with my generic node I have this uh, energy harvesting circuit and the lithium capacitor. And the connection you can see here is that I with my sense plus pin here I measure the capacitor voltage because when I get enough energy on my capacitor 
then my energy harvesting device here will turn on the power supply so then it will power up my generic node and the setting here is that when the lithium capacitor reach uh, above 2.6 volts it will turn on the power to the generic node sensor edition device and if the voltage falls below 2.49 volts it will turn off power so i would uh, like to measure the sense plus and sense minus i do not want to measure the main current so only sense plus and sense minus to see the voltage of the capacitor and the voltage from the the energy harvesting circuit to my generic node device so sense plus is the capacitor voltage so that uh, we will have uh, roughly two and a half volt uh, to start with so i set it between two and three and a half volt and the sense minus it's uh, the power, the voltage to from uh, the energy harvesting circuit to the generic node device. So that will be uh, zero in the beginning when I don't have enough energy in the capacitor and then it will go up to uh, 2.1 volt. So let's set it to 2500 here. Let's start a recording. So what will happen is that when I connect my uh, solar panel it will start charging my capacitor. Yeah, by the way, to show that I have the uh, generate the things network console so my device have not not been transmitting for almost 30 minutes now and I have it set to one transmit every minute. So right now it's not uh, working. So let's connect the solar panel. And as you can see, uh, energy harvester has not yet uh, collected enough energy to turn on uh, my uh, device yet. So right now the sun is charging my capacitor and when it exceeds uh, the threshold, it will give 2.1 volt here out to my uh, generic node. So now the sun has charged the capacitor to 2.6 volt and then uh, the energy harvesting circuits turns on the power output to the generic node. Now, yeah, so now uh, our generic node has been transmitting. Always start by profiling your device, both in active and sleep mode, so you know what the energy requirements are. If you are picking a battery, estimate battery life with a measured device power consumption. Estimation can be done with datasheet capacity. However, it can mean low accuracy. For better accuracy, profile the battery and use measured capacity. If you're picking an energy harvester, for example a solar panel, profile the solar panel and get its IVIC curve to understand what duty cycle its energy can support. And don't forget to check the maximum voltage the solar panel can generate, not to damage your device. Thank you very much.